Hello everybody, my name is Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're covering chapter 9 for MCAT Organic Chemistry and this chapter is about carboxylic acid derivatives. Now we saw in the previous three chapters that carbonyls are susceptible to attack by everything from water to amines to other carbonyl containing compounds. The focus of this chapter is going to be to describe the carboxylic acid derivatives that are going to appear on the MCAT, and that's going to include amides, esters, and anhydrides. We briefly covered a little bit of information about how to go from carboxylic acids to amides, esters, and anhydrides, but today we're going to review that content and cover a couple of new things in addition. The objectives that we're going to talk about in this video are the following. First, we will talk about amides, esters, and anhydrides. We will describe how to name them. We're going to describe their reactivity comparatively. And we'll also remind ourselves of a couple of things from chapter 8 in regards to amides, esters, and anhydrides. Second objective is talking about reactivity. We're going to talk about relative reactivity of these derivatives, steric effects, electronic effects, and even strains in some cyclic derivatives. And then the last and final objective for this chapter is nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. We're going to talk about three, anhydride cleavage, transesterification, and hydrolysis of amides. So let's go ahead and get started with our first objective, amides, esters, and anhydrides. Now these are all carboxylic acids derivatives. Each of these is formed by a condensation reaction with a carboxylic acid. So that's a reaction that combines two molecules into one while losing a small molecule. In this case, that small molecule, molecule is, you guessed it, water, which is created from the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid and a hydrogen that's associated with the incoming nucleophile. Now, for each of these carboxylic acid derivatives, amides, esters, and hydrides, we're going to focus on the relative the relevant nucleophile that forms the derivative and then the nomenclature of the functional group. All right, and we're going to go one by one. So first we're going to start with amides. All right, amides are compounds with the general formula R-C-O-N-R-2. They are named by replacing the oic acid with amide. All right, so alkyl substituents on that nitrogen are also going to be listed at, they're going to be listed as prefixes, and then their location specifically is going to be specified with the letter N. All right, so here we have some examples. All right, this is N ethyl and methyl butanamide. All right, so notice how this is going to be that main chain that connects to the nitrogen and has the carbonyl in it. All right, that's going to be, if it was a carboxylic acid, if this was an OH right here, you would call it butanoic acid. Remember that amides are named by replacing that oic acid with amide. So that's where we got butanamide from. And then we also still have to address the fact that there are two substituents associated or bounded to this nitrogen. Those are an ethyl and a methyl group. And like we said, their location is specified with the letter N. So we write N ethyl. That's telling you that this ethyl group is associated with the nitrogen. Then N methyl to, again, tell you that there is an ethyl that is binded to the nitrogen group. All right. Here's another example. So this is that main chain. It has two carbons. If it was a carboxylic acid, you would call it ethanoic acid. Remember, you replace the oic acid with amide. So ethanamide. Cool. Then you have to address what is attached to your nitrogen group. Here we just have two methyls. So we can write NN dimethyl ethanamide. All right. So that's how we would name amides. Now, amides are generally synthesized by the reaction of other carboxylic acids derivatives with either ammonia or an amine. And you're going to note that when we recover some of the 
reaction mechanism of this that the loss of hydrogen from the nucleophile is required for this reaction to to take place and so only primary and secondary amines are going to undergo this reaction all right before i remind you of the reaction which is written up here i do want to say one more thing that's important i briefly covered it in the last chapter because we are going to cover it in this chapter and here we are covering it cyclic amides they are called lactams all right, and they are named according to the carbon atom bonded to the nitrogen. So this first molecule right here, this is called a beta lactam. All right, it's called a beta lactam. Beta lactams contain a bond between the beta carbon and the nitrogen. Here, this is a gamma lactam. All right, it contains a bond between the gamma carbon and the nitrogen and so on and so forth. This would be delta, lactam, and etc. All right. Now, amides may or may not participate in hydrogen bonding. It depends on the number of alkyl groups they have bonded, and therefore their bo boiling points may be lower or on the same level as the boiling points of carboxylic acids. All right. Now, as a friendly reminder, we learned in the previous chapter that carboxylic acids can be converted into amides if the incoming nucleophile is ammonia or an amine. All right, and this was the setup for that kind of reaction. You can have carboxylic acid react with an amine and you can get an amide. And something that was important that we pointed out was that amides exist in a resonance state where delocalization of the electrons occurs here between this nitrogen and carbon and the carbon and oxygen. So between this whole region right here. All right, just a friendly reminder from the previous chapter. Now, the next thing we wanna talk about is esters. Esters are the dehydration synthesis products of other carboxylic acid derivatives and alcohols and they're named by placing the esterifying group this is the the substituent that is bonded to the oxygen as a prefix and then the suffix oate replaces oic acid so what i'm going to do is going to i'm going to scro scroll here where we're talking about naming and then we'll come back and remind ourselves of fisher esterification all right so they are named by placing the esterifying group as a prefix, and then the suffix O, it replaces oic acid. All right, O8 replaces oic acid. So here we have two quick examples. All right, so here we have one, two, two carbons. All right, so we might be thinking if this was a carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, but the oic is reply, replaced with O8. So ethanoate, and then you have to address what is attached to that oxygen here. All right, what is, what's the substituent that's bonded to that oxygen? All right, and that's going to be your prefix. So here it's an ethyl group. So this is ethyl ethanoate. All right, and same goes for this example as well. Here we have one, two, three, four groups. If this was a carboxylic acid at the end here as a terminal group, we would call this butanoic acid, but no, this is an ester. So butanoic acid turns into butanoate. All right, and then you have to describe what's being attached, what's bonded to this oxygen. All right, here it's an isopropyl group. So this is isopropyl butanoate. All right. In addition to that, something else that we briefly touched on last chapter that it's time to reiterate is that cyclic esters are called lactones. And they're named in the same manner as we as, lactum, as lactums that we just saw. And that's gonna be the name of the precursor acid molecule is gonna be included in the description of, in the description of um, the carbon atom that's bonded to the oxygen. So here, this would be, you know, beta lactone, all right? This would be like gamma, lactome delta lactome etc and you could also associate that they're they're named in the same manner in that sense but also with the name of the precursor acid molecule included and so you wouldn't just say beta lactone you would say beta propiolactone 
propiolactone. For this one, for gamma, this is gamma butyr, butyro, sorry, gamma butyrolactone, etc. All right, so that's how you would name cyclic esters. Now, because they lack hydrogen bonding, esters usually have a lower boiling point than their related carboxylic acids. Now, we touched on this briefly in the previous um, video, but I am going to reiterate. Under acidic conditions, mixtures of carboxylic acids with alcohols will condense into esters, and this reaction is called esterification. Esters can also technically be obtained from the reaction of anhydrides with alcohols, but here this mechanism shows the interaction and the mixture of carboxylic acids with alcohols under acidic condition. We talked about the reaction mechanism in the previous video. I am I, I have redrawn it here to reiterate its importance and that you should be familiar with this reaction mechanism for the MCAT. Now, as a final point to, uh, to, to this ester section before we move into anhydrides, I want to talk about triacyl glycerols. All right. These triacyl glycerols, this is the storage form of fats in the body. They are esters of long chain carboxylic acids and glycerol. Saponification, if you remember from the previous chapter, is the process by which fats are hydrolyzed under basic conditions to produce soap. So saponification of triacyl glycerols, all right, a triglyceride, for example, is going to yield glycerol and soap. All right, this is important to know. Treating triacyl glycerols with something like sodium uh, hydroxide is going to produce fatty acid salts, which we call soap, as well as glycerol. All right, this is a process you should be familiar with. You should know saponification of a triacyl glycerol. What does it yield? S soap and glycerol. Fantastic. With that, we can move into discussing anhydrides. Anhydrides, also called acid anhydrides, are the condensation dimers of carboxylic acids. These molecules, they have the general formula R, C, O, O, C, O, R. Now, symmetrical anhydrides are going to be named by substituting the word anhydride for the word acid in a carboxylic acid. And then when anhydrides are asymmetrical, you're simply going to name the two chains alphabetically followed by anhydride. All right, so here we can see two quick examples. All right, ethanoic, propanoic anhydride. So we have one, two, three on one side. If this was a carboxylic acid, you would call this ethanoic acid. Forget the acid. So that side is ethanoic. Other side has two carbons if it was a carboxylic acid. Um, sorry, switch this around. So sorry. All right. This side has three carbons. That's you're thinking propane. If it was a carboxylic acid, you would be thinking propanoic acid. For this anhydride, this side would be referred to as propanoic, just no acid. The other side has two carbons. You think ethane. If it was a carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid here, this is a segment of your anhydride, so it would simply be called ethanoic. And then you would put these two parts together alphabetically and then add anhydride. And so the name of this molecule is ethanoic propanoic anhydride. All right, that's for asymmetrical anhydride. For a symmetrical anhydride, you just, both sides are equivalent, you just figure out. Um, the name for one side, this is two carbons. You think ethane. If it was a carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, but it's a part of your anhydride. So we just refer to it as ethanoic. Both sides, all right, ethanoic. So you don't have to repeat it twice. You just say ethanoic anhydride. That's the name of this molecule. Now, like previously said in, in chapter eight, Acid anhydrides are synthesized by a condensation reaction between two carboxylic acids with one water molecule, uh, with, with one molecule of water that's lost in this condensation. All right, like demonstrated here. 
Now, um, something else that's important to know quickly, I am going to kind of draw it out as we talk about it, is that you can have uh, inter intramolecular and hydride reaction happen and the byproduct of that is a cyclic anhydride so for example if you had a molecule all right let me get out my pen if we had a molecule that looked something like this all right and say you treat this just with heat all right what could happen is an intramolecular anhydride formation all right, where well you have the same process happen as you would imagine with just two carboxylic acids reacting to carboxylic acid molecules reacting with the loss of a water molecule to form an an anhydride. That is happening, but all within this one molecule. And as a co consequence, you would form the following anhydride molecule, all right, with water as a byproduct. All right. Now, something to note is that anhydrides often have higher boiling points than their related carboxylic acid based solely on their much greater weight. All right. With that, we have reviewed and talked about further amides, esters and anhydrides. Let's quickly sum up all of the points we talked about. All right, we started with amides. They are the condensation products of carboxylic acids and ammonia or amines. Amides are given the suffix amide in the nomenclature. The alkyl groups on a substituted amide are written at the beginning of the name, all right, with, with the prefix N. In addition, we talked about cyclic Amides, they're called lactums, and they're named by the Greek letter of the carbon forming the bond with the nitrogen. Then we moved into esters. All right. Esters are the condensation products of carboxylic acids with alcohols. Fischer esterification, like we covered in the previous chapter. Esters are given the suffix O8, and the esterifying group is written as a substituent without a number. Cyclic esters, they're called lactones. Lactones are named by the number of carbons in the ring and the Greek letter of the carbon forming the bond with the oxygen. Lastly, we also discussed under the category of esters, triacyl glycerols, which are a form of fat storage, and they include three ester bonds between glycerol and fatty acids. Saponification is going to be the breakdown of fat using a strong base to form soap, and specifically, the saponification of triacyl glycerols gives you soap and glycerol. And then lastly, we discussed anhydrides. They are the condensation dimers of carboxylic acids. Symmetric anhydrides are named for their parent carboxylic acid, followed by anhydride. Asymmetric anhydrides are named by listing the parent carboxylic acids alphabetically followed by anhydride. Now, some cyclic anhydrides can be synthesized by heating dioic acids, all right? And we saw an example of that here near the end, all right? We're going to stop the video here. In the next video, we're going to cover objective two and objective three reactivity principles and nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, see you in the next video. Good luck. Happy studying and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.